In this day and age, a lot of us have become accustomed to instant gratification. You see something, you want it, and if you're fortunate enough, you get it. Well, today, we're going to show you that there is also a different kind of satisfaction that comes from the other side of that equation. You know the old saying, good things come to those who wait. In this case, it's Slinky's enclosure, the Lizard Shangri-La. It's been a year in the making, and today, we are making the final push by putting the finishing touches on what I consider to be Camp Kennan Masterpiece. The day has finally come, man. <laughs> Stuart from Universal Rocks is here. We've had so many failed attempts to get you here. Uh, it's been nuts with COVID, you know, just the materials to make this yep. stuff. Yep. And then, then the American Airlines, they canceled flights. It was just a nightmare getting here. But now my friend is here. Really excited about what you're doing. Um, guys, this is the culmination of almost a year of building this enclosure. This was what I envisioned when I built Slinky's Cages, the finishing touches that you're gonna be putting on it. We sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennet. This week's special shout out goes to Jennifer Costin. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. So talk to me about this amazing uh, product. I mean, we, we've been working a little bit already. I got excited, I forgot to hit record. But go ahead and take us through okay. exactly what we're doing here uh, with this product. I love it. So, so number one, you have to make a structure that's strong enough for the animal and to keep him in. So okay. you've done that with a cinder block wall and your, and your wire cage over right. the top. Okay, so now we're going to make that look more na naturalistic. And you've done that with your plants and your pond and your logs and everything like that. The panels, these panels are molded from real rocks in nature. Okay. And um, so we, wait, you go out and you like you find yep, rocks. Like yep. so, that's what's so cool about uh, Stuart. He's actually, we were hanging out earlier. I was giving him a tour of the camp and he goes, oh man, I love that cypress uh, <laughs> base of that cypress yeah. tree. I need to take an impression of that. Or, yep. So yep. you're literally yep. going out into the environment and you'll make molds. Yep. That's, that's so cool. That's the key. Yeah. That's the key. Find the really good molds. Okay. Take them back to the factory. Tweak them a bit if, it, if they're not going to, for example, a lot of our stuff we want running water. So if, if it's not going to run where you want it, then we might cut and paste a bit of the rock and turn it. In this case, this was just exactly like the rock face. That's so cool. So now you have this flexible skin like yep. we got here to cover all these cinder block walls. That's so we cool. We could make it rigid. We could put a, a, a foam structure on the back of it. Okay. It wouldn't make it as flexible doesn't give you the, the the flexibility on site like we want so this case um it's great to leave it like that and who's going to come around and if they know this it, is they're never going to damage it anyway not at all you no. can weed eat against this you oh, won't hurt it at all awesome so you can have your garden bed and your lawn coming straight and up guys that. check this out this is really cool what's neat is it's actually hiding the electrical box i'm going to be able it's almost like a skirt you i'll could. be able to lift it up yeah, yeah you watch this exactly. so there's an electric box i could just simply lift it up yep and then get to my electric um, but here's what I like what they've done. This is what I did yesterday in preparation for Stuart getting here. And I basically, you know, we're just going to tap con this, you know, right to the side. But you went ahead and since we have enough material, yep. look at from here, guys. He was like, no, nah, what you want to do is you really want to give it that three dimension. I mean, you know, you give it this illusion that it's actually the base is this large stone that I built on top of. I mean, this is really cool to, stuff. To, to add to that, yeah. I mean, this place, this place is freaking awesome. He's <laughs> just got his wonderland at home here. So to add to that, you, we're going around and looking at all these places that are done or finished, could change, could add to and whatnot. So who knows what this is all going to look like in a few years time. But as a landscaper, what I would do here is I'd create the garden to come out here. I'd put, I'd tuck this back in here. Okay. Okay, I'd put a nice big boulder here and then I'd yeah. grow some plants out of this. Right. So it's not just a wall all the way around, it looks like a, it a rock outcropping with your plants all around as well. And um, that'll just make this whole thing look even 10 times better. Oh my God. Yeah. So you see all these great ideas. I hope you guys are writing these down as well. Um, this is why I love doing videos uh, like with people like you, with yep. Aquascape and Universal Rocks, because they're artists. Right. They're using nature. Nature, remember, is art. Right. And so we're now, you know, borrowing from nature and we're really 
uh, beautifying this enclosure. I can't wait. I know Slinky's gonna be happy. We're gonna go on the inside also today and we're gonna get to work. So we've got a lot to do. Let's get moving yep. because Slinky's place is gonna be, I guess we're pimping out my cage. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> that we're what you pimping call it? Slinky's cage, man. Yeah. Very cool. See you guys in a little bit. <laughs> The cool thing about Universal Rock material is that you can totally work with it. You can cut it, bend it, and use the scraps for other cool ideas. This piece would be perfect for a hide box. You just need a little bit of muscle, a couple of power tools, and a lot of screws and staples. Here we're locking it onto the wood framing of Slinky's cage. Man, this is awesome! But don't get me wrong. It's still some intense work. You're watching three guys really go at it here. But the mere fact that this is all being accomplished in one day instead of one week makes it totally worth it. We are saving a lot of money and time. What's going on, man? Jerry showed up. We got everybody over here to see what's going on with the Universal Rocks. Man, you guys, I've been getting a lot of phone calls, so Tom has actually been doing a lot of the work with Yeah, remember me? But my gosh, this looks amazing, man. So tell me, you know, we were talking earlier, uh, you were saying like I can make a little hole in here, kind of fill it with soil, and we could have planting pockets, that, like plants growing out of this stuff. So, so the more we do that, the more it's gonna inside and out look the same. That's, gotcha. That's the trick here, not to look just look inside this nice enclosure but make your whole landscape look cool yeah excuse me guys yeah yeah good so um in this case screw we'll screw back here onto the cinder blocks okay screw back over here onto the cinder blocks and then cut some notches out of this fill it with soil and grow some plants that's so now really you're gonna cool. have your plants in there your plants out here exactly look magnificent that's gonna look cool and then with these seams what happens we're gonna so, seal these together yes yeah, so we this is not paint that's coloring this we use crushed rock and sand as we spray into the mold so wow. so this you, you just can't scratch it you can't chip it or anything and the paint doesn't come off because it isn't paint so what we do is we just screw this back or staple this back we then put a smear of caulking over that and then we dab our brush into these powder sands and before you know it it won't you won't know you won't even a see seam. the seam that's yep. so cool check this out and uh look at the backside even the backside's looking good right we could have chintzed and not done the backside but you know what my neighbors want something nice to look at too so they'll get to see slinky's enclosure from the back i just really love the depth and you know what just touching this stuart it's heat. warm it's yeah. got heat so yeah. you know slinky may want to lay up on this it's firm enough he can handle this. So this is really, really cool, man. Uh, I love just the way this is looking right now. And it goes up really quickly. So that's what's cool about this material that Stuart has developed and designed because for a fraction of the cost, a fraction of the weight, uh, you have a realistic looking like naturalized enclosure. Right. Yeah, that's so cool. I mean, what's your options? How, how else would you make that look real? You're going There's to use, no way. you know, you're going to have to get a guy who's done a lot of cement rock work, which is huge material. Cement's pretty cheap, but the labor involved in doing that, this is, this is like, if I was doing that, which is what I used to do, there's a good week and a half doing all of this in concrete cement, carving yeah, it. Exactly. And really, it's, it's a lot. The outside is pretty much done. Now we've got to go inside and uh, let's talk about how we're gonna do this. Tell me what you think. I've been working a little bit, digging a trench. Um, so with the inside, we're gonna do it a little bit differently because we have some concerns with Slinky. Obviously, we don't want Slinky to kind of go behind this stuff because our goal is to always make sure Slinky goes into his box, yep. which is heated and you know, in the winter we get these cool nights and that could be, as we know, with Slinky disastrous. We almost lost them last year, uh, which is actually why we're spoiling the crap out of him by building him this giant enclosure. <laughs> yeah. He's on his second life here. So what should we do? I dug out this trench because I figure we're gonna go ahead and sink this, uh, your material in. But now I'm thinking, mate, um, we, we might want to roll it out a little bit. We can tack it and then backfill it. We may not even need, we were talking about maybe doing cement, but that might be good because he won't be able to dig past that anyway. 
What well, do you think? That's, that's your op options. I haven't okay. had a big lizard like that, so I'm not sure. It really is not a big job to just do the concrete screws in there. Okay. At the bottom. Okay. So that's, I think that's probably okay. For guys who are going to build a little enclosure or a massive one like this, you know, having the wood on top of the cinder makes it really easy to bring your paneling over and just screw straight into that. So that that's saving us a lot of time. Time. Cool. Um, so the other option, screw it in or not, cut it so it goes right to the bottom. Mix up some concrete, pour some, pour concrete, some concrete bags in. He's not going to dig through that, I don't, I don't imagine. Nope, nope. Um, Or dig it back a little bit more, curve it out. I still think if he decided to dig further out and he saw the end of that panel, he might dig under might it. decide to. Yeah. Where's he going to go? Nowhere. Nowhere anyway. but, uh, so I guess what we're going to do is we're going to get to the inside now. Yep. We're going to figure out the best way to do it and we'll let you know what we come up with. Yep. But uh, this is going to be really fun, man. This is going so quick. Yep, fantastic. I want to keep him here longer though. <laughs> I like this guy. We talk about UFOs as well. It's a fun play. <laughs> hoping he was going to say that today. <laughs> the authenticity is just <laughs> outstanding. All right, so we are getting done with the big pieces. Uh, we got a lot done today, and I can't thank Stuart enough, and even Tom. Give Tom a hand. He did a lot of work today. <laughs> yep. um, so this is pretty much it. Uh, we're just going to do the uh, threshold here for the door. And then, uh, to be honest, I'm going to spend a little bit of time uh, doing some detailing. Yep. Probably a whole day of just working on the um, working on the screw heads, detailing them, kind of painting over them, and fixing just some of the odds and ends. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um, there's there's a lot of lot of trying to match up the inside to the outside. If okay. You do that, if you spend the time on that, it'll look flawless. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. So uh, we're going to sign off for now. Yep. But when you guys see me in just a couple of seconds, right? In just a quick edit, I'm mm -hmm. going to be doing some of this detailing work. See you in a little bit. All right, so we got the big stuff done, guys. We got the thresholds for the door. Everything's uh, done. Uh, just to, I'm going to get to the Slinky's box on my own yep. because we're running out of daylight. And there's still some technical aspects of this that you need to teach me, Stuart. So what are we going to learn right now? Okay, so... Um as Emily from Snake Discovery said, yeah. okay, we're going to do some sand painting. She's coined a new She's, term for she you. She has, she has, and it's, I, th I like it. So, All right. In this case, we're using some M1 corking. Could, okay. be, could be just silicon, an, an adhesive-type silicon. Okay. This one's tan in color. So what we do is we just squeeze this. You don't have to be neat. Just squeeze this over this join here. All right. More than enough to just smear it. We'll smear it in a minute. You don't have gloves on, but I do. So I'm going to show you what to do with the, You do want to wear gloves when you do this. Okay. Um, okay, if you've got bigger holes that are too much for caulking, then you want to get that canned foam. Yep. Like up here. Carpet Fill that out. with the canned foam, let that dry, carve it back. Okay. And then smear this over it. You want to go over your concrete screw heads here as well. Right here. Okay, if it's really hot day, you probably wouldn't want to do more than this at one time. Otherwise, it skins over and then it won't adhere. Okay. The colors won't adhere. Well, luckily, it's nice and cool. It's beautiful. Yep. You, you, you turned on the good weather for me. I appreciate yeah. it. I don't know about good weather. I'm not a fan of this cool weather no. because it's a lot of work for these animals. But Oh, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Okay, so then we just go like this. Just don't be too neat. We're trying to camouflage a join, a crack that's between the two panels. So here, and you can come all the way over a little bit, back and forth. Okay, that's it. And then these are the, these powders, these colored sands, that's exactly what this is all colored with. Okay. So it's, there's no paint. So when you dab this in, the brush in here, 
it gets on the brush and then it it acts like a release agent from sticking to your the corking sticking to your brush so you just get get this on and um just be it. a little patient we've got to go back and forth a few times here okay and then when we get enough on there then we push a little harder and it starts to texture look at that it starts to look texture this, it as well now it's really starting to blend yeah so that's cool that is yeah. cool how did you figure this out man because um, you did this didn't you well we had to you know yeah you had to work it out it, it, otherwise we couldn't do our panels if we didn't work out a, a joining system then we were going to be stuck so this is um this is all a uh, trial yeah, and error. Trial and, and error from yep. you. That's so cool. there's a bit of a crack line there where I didn't put maybe enough caulking. So one, we could add some more, or we could, sometimes that looks like a little fracture anyway. Yeah. So long as it's not too straight. There's perfection and imperfection, right? <laughs> right, it's, right. That's what we're trying to do. You know, yep. nature, you know, just kind of does things. So yes. I love that. So, and if you want to get really creative, some of these fraction lines through here, you can, um, kind of continue. You, get, you get a knife really and do that and then just touch that up and, and it looks as though it, it's one piece yes and it's amazing as soon as you do a couple of little lines across a fracture uh, across a join you, it, from back here you don't even know it was ever a join that's so cool yeah. man you know what's so, great about Stuart is this all started because he loves reptiles when he was a young guy yeah. running around in the bush in right. Australia yep that's you just wanted to bring nature to you and and it was funny you know when I first started doing that I was creating the habitats back when I was 14 and I really enjoyed that more than keeping the animals I wasn't the best at keeping the animals but I could create a nice habitat so, gotcha so, and here I am, 55, still doing the same thing. Yeah, and you know what's awesome, guys, is you all, so many people watch this channel, and they're like, how can I do what you do? And, and we were talking about that today. Yep. You gotta be a little bit crazy, yep. and you gotta be a little unrelenting. You can't give up, yep. ever. No, no. You know, you just gotta and keep working hard. That was yep. the big key. Absolutely, yeah. and, and, and you find that you get lost in it. And, and next thing you know, it's working anyway, yeah. because you're throwing yourself 100% into it. So. Yep. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. And then the other cool thing, uh, just a bit of advice from two old fellas here, <laughs> yapping at you, is sometimes you start off in a direction and you think you're gonna end up here, but life, like the cracks in the rock, kind of has its own way of guiding you. And so yeah. you gotta also know when to flow with gotta it. Gotta be flexible. Like, That's right. Like all your bamboo around here, yeah. lots of bamboo. You know, the storm comes through and the bamboo moves with it but yeah. the big trees they don't move so much so their limbs break that's right so be but be like bamboo <laughs> or as bruce lee said be like water <laughs> all right man I've got, this is literally the first seam so we've got a lot of seams yep. i've got a lot of screw heads um this is going to be fun though you know i love this kind yeah. of stuff i get to hang out with slinky all day so that's what i'm going to be doing guys i'm yep. going to be just dabbing these and whew, a lot of work yeah. ahead but thankfully yep. it's for a good cause Nice. Thanks, brother. Yeah, Appreciate my pleasure. This. My pleasure. Yeah. There's a happy little crack right there. <laughs> All right, guys, I've been uh, diligently working here, uh, doing some detailing. Here is the caulk, okay? And I need to go on the inside and fill it in, but you can kind of see how it just blends in. I'm trying to marry the two sides and make sure it looks like one piece that the steel or the, the wire mesh is coming out of. So I use gap filling foam, okay? I have to let this expand. I just sprayed this stuff. So I let it expand. And then what I do is I shave it off and we use the caulking gun right there and we kind of squirt it and it fills in the voids. And then I take my sand painting uh, tools and we just gently dab, just dab it at the end. And then it kind of blends in and looks like actual rock. So as you know, 
I've got the inside and outside to do. I've got a lot of work that needs to be accomplished here today. Um, it's not gonna get done all in one day or all in one video. But I wanted to finish this video up and just say thanks to Stuart from Universal Rocks for coming out here and just really busting his butt and donating his time and his materials and his talent to make Slinky's enclosure the coolest enclosure ever. Uh, also, I've been getting to work on his little hide box here. Um, a lot of detailing is going to have to go into this, but man, we're going to do the spray foam in here. We're going to seal this all up. It's going to look like one giant work of naturalistic art, but I, I think this looks good. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I love the way this kind of looks. It creates a strange shape. Uh, and man, I just need to fashion some of the uh, universal rocks to the lid and look at who it is. There's Slinky right now, just enjoying a little warmth in there. So it's gonna be a really cool enclosure. You guys will just have to pop back. Like I said, so much to do in one video, but I wanted to finish with a really big thank you to Stuart. And of course, my friends at Aquascape and my friend Jerry, everyone who helped donate their time to make this the most incredible monitor lizard enclosure and slash habitat that you can find anywhere. Really, really excited. So thanks so much. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, what do you think of our handiwork? I think it looks good. Would you want one of these in your backyard? Let me know. All right, guys, thanks so much. Talk to you soon. I got a lot of work to do. Later.